Greetings. My name is Al, and I'd like to welcome you to Prevailing Truth. And I'm speaking to you from somewhere in Middle America. And I have on the Holy Spirit hotline, Pastor Justin Bozeman from the East Coast. And uh, one of the reasons that I decided to do this was basically to put my voice out there on a lot of things that are going on in this world today. And one of the big issues that I have is uh, when it comes to basically politics and religion, it's like it has become increasingly difficult to speak with family and friends because there's a lot of disagreement. And I'm having a hard time understanding exactly why. Because if we're all seeking the same thing, if we're seeking truth, then we should be on the same page. But there literally is something that's going on that is causing so much confusion and so much, what's the word I want to use? Division. Not just talking about just regular people on the street. I'm talking about family members that I know and love. So I decided to do this broadcast and Full disclosure is is that uh, Pastor Bozeman is my son, and uh, he is one of the individuals that we're on the same page. And so what we're going to do in this next hour or so, depending on how long, because uh, this topic is, you can go on, on, on and on forever with this topic, but uh, we're just going to put some things out there and discuss this and talk about it. But before we get into that, something happened right before uh, Donald Trump got elected or after he was elected, because I don't claim to be a prophet or have a prophetic gift. But every now and then, God will speak to me and give me something. And when Donald Trump got elected, this is what God spoke to my heart. And he told me that as a result of this election, that he was going to uncover some things and that I was going to know who was who, by whom they sided with. And it becomes clearer and clearer to me that it's almost like after this happened, for me, it's like the devil was uncovered because I begin to see exactly what the enemy is doing. and. It literally breaks my heart when I see what's going on. But I wanted to get somebody else's perspective, especially somebody that's younger than me because I'm old school. I'm kind of stuck in my ways. But I wanted to hear from uh, somebody else. And also the Lord gave me some scripture too that I'll share in the midst of what we're talking. But uh, Pastor Bozeman, I have a couple questions for you. Yes, sir. And the, and, the, and the hope is, is that people that are maybe uh, on the fence, whether you're black or white, uh, or whether you are a Christian or a non-believer, I'm hoping that you are listening uh, to this broadcast with the, uh, the, the goal of hearing a different side. And from our, my perspective and what we're doing, we're seeking truth. That's our mm-hmm. main goal. Yeah. Is that we're looking, we're looking, and, and when I say we're seeking truth, let's put it, put it where the rubber meets the road. In my belief system, the only truth that's out there is God. God is truth. And uh, if God ain't in it, it ain't truth. And so when we seek and you look and you line things up and here we here, here's our here's our here's our bottom line and our basis from what where we look at things we look at things according to the word of God. And uh you know we probably lose a lot of people just on that fact alone. 
But if you are somebody that really wants to know or wants to understand what truth is, please listen to this broadcast. Now, first of all, Pastor Bozeman, I want to ask you this. Why is there such a difference in the white evangelical community as opposed to the black evangelicals regarding politics? I mean, there's such a schism. I mean, and we talk about the church. Yeah. First, first of all, let me put it out to the audience. It's something that I hear over and over again. There's no such thing as the black church. There's no mm-hmm. such thing as the white church. There's just the church, the body of Christ. And the enemy comes in and divides any kind of any way he can. But why is there such a difference? I, 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 please explain that I, to me. You know what? I, for me, that's like the million dollar question. Because for basically what it most has probably has been for my entire life, I've always seen a difference in how people who would say that they're believers of Christ vote and have their moral standards in terms of politically. Uh-huh. And they've usually tended to vote more for what people would call uh, right-wing or conservative-leaning. Um, they've voted more that way. And then go to the predominantly uh, black church where uh, there's a lot of black members, it seems like they consistently encourage their members to vote left or liberal or very uh, uh, democratic leaning. And I think, to be honest, you're right about and this that. Is something, and this is something that I, that I told somebody years ago, and, and people got mad, but I actually believe in totality that at some point in time, whether it was in the early 50s, late 40s, um, the, the black church pastors predominantly sold the black community out by, by agreeing to team up with liberals or with the Democratic Party. Do you and not- I, I feel like it's been that way for a long time ever since then because I, it seems like they don't keep God's word so that when people see things, they can basically practically apply them to their lives or to, or to, to, the, to the situation. And yeah. I think that's why there's such a big difference. Yeah, and you know what? You, you're absolutely right. And from my perspective, and I'm a little bit older than you, here's what I believe happened. And I'm looking, and I'm not looking to blame, but I want to just point some things out. The white evangelical church did not do their due diligence as far as black communities were concerned. Now, some of them, some of, some of them did, but for the yeah. most part, they did not. And what happened, who came in to fill that void? The Democratic Party. That's true. Okay, That's and the true. reason that black people are so hung up on the Democratic Party because if we look at history, black folks was Republican. Yeah. When black people, when the Emancipation Proclamation came, the party of Lincoln were Republicans, and most black people, because of that, became Republican. Mm-hmm. But what happened? The Great Depression came. A- a- there you go. That started to turn some people, and then basically FDR, um, basically he went to kind of everybody and, and, and was like, what do you guys need from, from me in order to get you guys to vote? And at that time, since everybody was poor, I mean, everybody said, we need jobs, you know? The new deal. And so, the new yeah. deal. And, yeah, and, so and that, that, that brought some people home. Yeah, the new deal and welfare. Yep. And... Here's the issue that I have. When we, we, black folks in 2019, we're still looking for reparations. We're still looking for 
somebody to hand us and give us something and pay pay us back. And that ain't happening. You know, and here's here's my premise. Here's where I stand. This is this is what I stand on. I stand on the word of God, which says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Yep. Now, if God, yep. if I got God and God is with me and for me, then I don't need your handout. But you're absolutely right. And it's a shame. We're still, and I and I see the talking heads. I I turn to CNN every now and then and and sometimes Fox is starting to get on my nerves too but I just see the talking heads and especially what's so disappointing is black people that are so hung up on the Democratic Party now now, now let me ask you another question even in the midst of that why do you say black people hypocritically vote against their own interests well because they're taught to Here's the thing. Black people are taught to vote ethnically as opposed to bloodline. Oh, my. And the issue with that is that they look at other people who are black and they're like, well, we have more in common, so we need to be together on this issue. But the issue is that when, is that when you get saved, you join a, a new bloodline, and your interests are supposed to change. But, 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 the, but the issue is, is that they still are putting a priority over their ethnicity or people of their color or of their kind over God's interest. The reason why in the in the Bible when it says that in the last days nation will rise against nation or 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 basically ethnicity will rise against ethnicity. Oh pastor. Come if on. you're basically in a if you're in a position where you're automatically trained to hate other ethnic groups because you're told that nobody has it worse than you all the time. You need to be looking out for our own uh, because nobody else is going to do it. The thing is, if you read the Bible in the church, in the book of Acts, it talks about how, how they came from every nation and, and every Come tongue. On. Come on. That's the only place that you see a multicultural environment in world history that is encouraged. And it didn't have to be forced. But the problem is with a lot of black pastors is that they've always preached this divisive message about, well, well, we need to do what's good for the black community as a whole. And my thing is, is like, well, what we good for the black community is follow the Bible, because that would be good for all communities. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but they don't think of it that way. Right. They, they're thinking of, they're listening to people who basically don't have any spiritual insight and they're telling them that they need to basically base their allegiances off of their skin color. And that's why we are where we are. And and that's why I say black people always vote hypocritically against their interests because whenever you vote for a party that especially if you're an evangelical, if you're a black evangelical, how can you vote for a party that is against your primary bloodline, which is the blood of Jesus and the Word of God. Oh man! I'm, for a party that basically talking now. <laughs> for for a, for a party that basically promotes homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, transgenderism, it promotes the worship of Baal with uh, wanting to fund all these Planned Parenthoods so that so that we can basically choose to kill babies in the womb, and it's like. Meanwhile, the whole reason why it was started in the in the first place was the extinction of black people. Hey, wow. But yet black people vote to keep these people in power to keep funding them. So basically you're giving money for to your, keep own your destruction. own race from being born. <laughs> to your own destruction. And then you and, and and then you have the same party that that is supposed to be working for you. They basically say, well, you know, since the world is so racist and, and these cops are so racist and the law is unequally applied, you know, that's why you, you need to vote for us. But then, whenever illegal immigrants run and hop over the border, they don't believe that they deserve to be held accountable for breaking the law. It, 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 that's, so hip, law. that's so hypocritical. 
it's, 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 it's very hypocritical, but when you bring this up to a black person, then you're a ten, then you're an Uncle Tom, right. then you're a bootlicker, then you're all these different things. And these are basically code names for me, because to be honest, I laugh at them whenever I hear them now, because I always laugh at whatever people say Uncle Tom, because they don't really know what it means. And I always say, if you want to call me an Uncle Tom, I'll be your Uncle Tom. Because the real Uncle Tom, he employed a whole bunch of people in a factory. He got some jobs. He fed family. Come on, Pastor. He made sure that they were educated. And he made sure that they progressed, that their generation was better off than the last one. So if you want to call me an Uncle Tom, hey, I'll take that. You know, it's always the people who, it's always the people who are willing to be persecuted that their cause for their people, which is why I always talk about Moses being misunderstood when his fellow Hebrew came and was fighting somebody and Hebrew was like, and, 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 and basically Moses was like, you guys shouldn't be fighting each other. I'm trying to help you guys. Right. You know? Right. But the Bible says, and, and Stephen mentioned this in Acts 7, like they didn't know that Moses was basically trying to be a deliverer for them. Right. Instead, they spurned him. They said, oh, man, get out of here, man. Now, now, now you, now you saying something. Let me, let me just slip something in here. And this is, this is what I, I, I'm getting from God in, in, in this whole thing. It's like, you know how history repeats itself. God sent, yeah, always, yeah. God sent Jesus. He sent Moses, just like you said. They didn't understand him. He sends Jesus, and what do they do? They crucify him. Yep. Now, yep. people probably be upset with what I'm getting ready to say. Then he sends a Donald Trump. <laughs> now, we That's know right. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not in the same category as, as Jesus. That's mm -hmm. saving us spiritually. But as far as, and I've heard other prophets talk about Donald Trump being the Cyrus, Donald Trump, Trump being the, the, the Jehu. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I really can believe that. I really believe that Donald Trump, and the, and the reason that I believe this, let me explain to y'all why why I believe this. Mm -hmm. On election night, when they were going and looking at these polls and saying Hillary Clinton is up and and everybody, they were all, the, the left and the Democrats were so joyous one of the greatest nights ever. <laughs> one of the greatest nights ever. You know why it was such a great night for me? Because I saw <laughs> God in action. God right. did. If, right. if you don't understand nothing, if you can't see nothing, if you can't understand nothing, understand that that was a God thing. And that out of it, it's like Donald Trump just rose up out of the ashes mm -hmm. to become. Mm -hmm the president of the United States. Why? He didn't have no ties to the, the deep state. He didn't have anybody that he was attached to because he was already a self-made billionaire, so he didn't need nobody's money. That's right. So God puts this man in office, and somebody coined the phrase, and I really like it, he is the disruptor in chief. Yep. Because I really believe that in this season, it's being said, and I believe it, that this is God's reprieve for the body of Christ. As he put yep. this man in office, it's time for us. But at the same time, it's a reprieve for the body of Christ and, and everybody. Yep. Let me focus down to my people. I'm black. But I'm looking at my people and I'm saying, just like when, remember when Jesus came and the scripture talked about him weeping over the city, he said, because he said, yep. You missed yep. your day of visitation. Yep. You missed it. And black folks are missing mm -hmm. their day of visitation. It's not that Donald Trump is going to do all this, but he is open. Look at the stuff he's already done. You know what? And, yep. and, and I, just like you, I get called to Uncle Tom, the Donald Trump lover. Yes, yes. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's listening. Yes, I love Donald Trump. I really do. Anybody that I believe that, that God has sent for a purpose. I'm backing them up. I love them because yep. I know that they are here for, for, for our good and not here for our destruction. 
but I get the same right. thing. I, I get called to Uncle Tom. And, I, and But what's so disturbing is that they can't see it. They don't see it. Family they members. Don't. They don't. Your family members. It's, it's kind of like, it's, yeah, it's like a spirit of stupor. And, and, and one thing that they used to always coin, remember, uh, I think it was on CNN, I want to say it was Don Lemon or somebody else coined the phrase that Donald Trump is the divider in chief, right? <laughs> right. Now, now, granted, people were mad, but, but you know what? I agree with them. It's some you truth to know that. What, what, I'm about to say, you want to know what, what actually happens whenever somebody speaks the truth? It divides people. Oh, Jesus my goodness. Himself, Jesus there himself you go. said, I didn't come to bring unity to this world or peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to divide and to separate. Because when some people are not on the same page as you, you need to get rid of them. They need to be exposed for who they are. And right now, what is needing to be exposed is the fact that black people have looked to another deliverer that hasn't worked for them. Come on, come on, and, Pastor. And, and, they, and they need to be shaken out of it so that they can be divided, so that they can be shown who's true and who's not true. So I'll, I'll give them that title all day because as a, as a Christian and as a believer, we always used to get taught, and this is, and, and, and this is the problem with, I call them a weak pastor. They always preach as well, you know, we, we got to love everybody, we got to do this, we got to do that. And I'm like, man, the Bible says that if we live the way that we're supposed to live, we're supposed to divide people. We're supposed to be Come able on, to pastor. see where the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the real battle lines are actually drawn out instead of people hiding and acting like they're for you when they're really against you. So right. instead of people stabbing you in your back, you can face them, and then you can fight them face to face and know who your enemies are. Because one thing that, that, that is really happening in, in this season is God really, and this is what God showed me that, that Donald Trump was supposed to do, and I actually prophesied this, I said Donald Trump's number one job while he's in the office is to expose the corruption of this government. Oh, and that's what he, he definitely is doing that. It's to expose the corrupt process. It's basically to make people see how corrupt the government really is right now. And it's supposed to be so, so that people mobilize. The problem is, like I said, people miss their, their uh, visitation. They miss opportunities. This is an opportunity that really God has given, but instead of people taking advantage of it, they're sitting there doing what they normally do, which is complaining, crying about racism this and racism that, crying about how, well, we as black people, we're always behind, we're always this. Instead of mounting up and mobilizing and taking full advantage of the opportunity that they have right now. Right. To actually step up, you know what? So that's what's been troubling to me, right? And you know what? It's almost like because of uh, the years of slavery and all the other things. It's almost like black people have a a, a predisposition to to hatred, and we we Man, that's true. we have we have allowed ourselves to get to a place where. It, in 2019, we're still talking about racism, and I, and I, and don't get me wrong, I am not saying that racism has been eradicated. What I'm saying is is that we, by now, as a people, should have gotten, uh, we have become much bigger than racism. So racism shouldn't really have an effect mm -hmm. on you. It really mm -hmm. shouldn't. And 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 and. We were we were we were sort of laughing about this, but it's so true. Uh, and it's not this is not just true with just for black people. It's for I really believe for the body of Christ. We don't know the power that we have, and yeah. we don't we don't come together like we should to bring about change. And I think that's what God is really trying to do. It's like how is it that uh, the 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 homosexual community can have such an effect on society because really if you look at the st st statistics it's not really that many gay folk but 
according to, to their 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 uh their public relations and their PR, there's a gay person in every family. If you turn on TV, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what they, they call always it. in every in the some of the programs that I that I love and really it's like there's always got to be a gay character that pops out somewhere. Why is that? And then yeah. we get we get get a get accused of of being uh, uh homophobic homophobic and racism and no and, and <laughs> it's like come on and now you you, you get flack for being a man toxic um, yeah. masculinity yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and like, meanwhile yeah meanwhile men need to turn around and say that, that there's toxic femininity you know <laughs> there's toxic feminism that's what's going on now you know, man, nobody I... likes to talk about that. It's basically something that they do to basically cause you to submit and make you afraid to basically speak truth, which is what the church's job is. But most black evangelical churches right now aren't speaking truth. No, they, they never. No, they, I, they're not. They're not. Yeah. You and know, it's like, you don't, and, and, you and don't it's like, them. it's it, what I look, what I'm looking, when I look out at the, the, the church. And I'm saying the church. I'm putting all of them in there. It's like more of a, a of a thing where we're entertaining people, and you don't want to. I just saw a thing where a, a pastor actually got fired. This is how far we come. He got fired for speaking out against homosexuality. Really? Yeah. His congregation fired him because he was speaking out against. Homosexuality. I don't. I don't. I, I mean, and this is this is how far. We, so, this is why I wanted to take a platform like this because uh, the scripture says this in John eight thirty two says, "And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." And you remember that when I got in the pulpit, one of the things that I always told people was. Don't take don't take this word at face value that I'm telling you. Go and seek it out for yourself. The problem mm-hmm. is with a lot of people is that they do no research whatsoever. And you know what the scary thing for me is? When I watch some of these programs, there's a reporter and he's on a college campus. And he's asking, and this happened recently, and uh, he was talking about, uh, uh, this is a quote that was made by uh, a person uh, in, in, in high office, and they said this about uh, illegal aliens. And yeah. the, 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 the student went off, oh, that's horrible, there it is, there that. And then the guy says, well, do you know that was Barack Obama? <laughs> and then they started laughing. And they may be shocked. Exactly. <laughs> that's the, that's, but that, you, you know, when you really look at that, and you, you I mean, it's funny, but it's really sad because so pe- people are so all you it's like that there really is we they laugh and they joke about it but there really is a trump derangement syndrome and here's what i say and here's the scary thing for me pastor it's like if you hate donald trump then you hate god uh oh <laughs> now, now, now I know I'm gonna get in. Uh-oh. I, I know Uh-oh. I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that. But if you hate Donald Trump, you hate God because. And see, people think. And I heard ooh, who was it? Michael Steele saying uh, he was on TV talking about telling Christians to shut up. Christians just need to shut up. No, Christians need to open their mouths and make it known where we stand. And that's yeah. not happening. And, and, and not I, only that, yeah, that's but, frustrating. Yeah, and we need to vote. And you know what? Very people ask me, well, I, well, I guess you, you, you because you're Republican. I say, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a Christian. And when I vote, yeah. I vote my values. Mm-hmm. I vote my values. I can't. And I here's the here's the thing. I can remember talking to pastors. Now this is these are a majority of black pastors. We were talking about who they go, gonna vote for. They were looking at me like I was crazy, and I was looking at them like they were crazy. How can you vote for Hillary Clinton? How can you just this? 
I, I'm not going to talk about all issues. I'm just going to yeah. talk about one issue, abortion. How, as a pastor, as a man of God, can you vote for Hillary? Can you explain that to me, Pastor? You, I think you uh, well, already did, but here, here's what they here's here's what they'll say. And, you know, so they'll they'll give a lot of different excuses. The first excuse they'll say is, "Well, it's not a one issue um, election." And then I'm like, "Well, okay. What about their stance on the LGBT? What about that? Do you believe that?" that they should be able to tell you that you need to redefine your, your idea of what marriage is. <laughs> and then, and, and then, and then, then you should ask them, well, do you believe in equal justice for all? <laughs> so why is there one standard of justice for people here in America living under the law, but there's not another, but there's a different standard of justice for people who, hop over the border illegally and they get to keep what they stole man. and they get given stuff and, at man, the same time. And, and, you know, and he, Isn't he, that injustice? He, yep. Man, you know what? When I look at that, that, that whole issue, we talk about deception. Deception is so thick right now. And so, yep. so especially the people that are more gullible. When I say people that are more yep. gullible, I'm I'm speaking directly to black folk. Yep. Somebody told me a joke one time, and it wasn't funny to me. Uh, but they said this. They said, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually true. As much as sad as that is to say, that's been true. We we don't want to we don't want to educate ourselves now now just like you said. I see black people standing up for illegal aliens, not understanding that when they when they coming. Number one, not even I can't even go there before I go here. What don't you understand about illegal? <laughs> <laughs> what they, don't you? They, that, that, that just that, that just loses its uh, that just loses something in in their mind. They don't even think about that. And then I'm looking at at these these television people who's talking about these people, these these illegal aliens have constitutional rights. Yep. And I'm saying to myself, that is a contradiction. That is an oxymoron. Yep. How yep. in the hell? Excuse mm-hmm. me. And then what they do when they come in, they're coming to your community. They come in and take over your job. Yep. They come in and, and they're living off of your taxes. Yep. And what don't you get about that? And these black people are standing up for illegal immigrants. And then what about the people that came in and did it right? I'm for yep. immigration, but... Come in the right way. You know, there's two <laughs> things. Here that goes. You, you know what? That's th- how that goes. Yeah, and you know what? There's two things that we, we, and black people need to understand something, which I don't think they do. Understand that this country that you're born in, that's why I don't call myself an African American. Although I know that I have African DNA in my blood, Nigerian, matter of fact. <laughs> But what we don't understand, I'm more Af- American than I am African. I'm more of a patriot. The two things that I thank God for, number one, is the Bible. And number two is the Constitution, which I believe was inspired by God. This mm-hmm. is the greatest country on earth. And that's why all these people are trying to get here. But we do need, and they talk about, well, He's talking about a wall or whatever. I don't care. We need a we need a wall. I agree. We need and a you wall. You know what's funny? That's an example of black people being hypocritical in terms of their voting and because they'll vote for a party that prioritizes mass immigration, but then they'll complain about how when they go to get a job, they're picked last. <laughs> You're right. You're right. They complain about right. affirmative action. And meanwhile, I'm like, you do know that affirmative action 
works for women too, right? You like you do know that affirmative action works for people who come from Mexico too, right? You do know that 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 affirmative action works for uh, Honduran immigrants too, right? <laughs> And what makes it worse is it doubles. If you're a Honduran woman, that's even more affirmative action. If you're from India, that's more affirmative action. So why would you, why would you want to keep voting for something that basically is going to make you even less of a minority? <laughs> like, do you think, like, do you think that they're going to put your interests above theirs? Like, do you think Mexican people are going to begin to say, man, we need to help the black? You, yeah, no, you, you hit, I, you, I ain't you, never you, seen that. You're hitting it right on the head. I ain't never seen that. And, and, and my thing is, is they, they have their opportunity in their country. See, I'm, I'm not as nice as, as you are, Daddy. Because <laughs> my thing is, my thing is, is that they have their, their own country. And, and in their own country, if they want to fix them, they, they need to fix it, whether it's start a, start a revolution, whether it's by voting people out, they need to do something. But coming here to take over for us, where you, you as a black person always say, well, we didn't get reparations, and our ancestors built this country. And, and it's like, so you now want to let other people benefit from, from the country that your ancestors built by letting them in here? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me, and so it just it, it it's just to me how how ignorant people are. What's going on is really amazing, and uh, and they're not going to get information watching the media because a lot of people are successfully socially engineered by the media. Oh, talk about they're that. they're about they're that. very successfully. They're basically told when to be outraged by something. And then they are. Oh my For instance, goodness! I, and and I'm going here because I went here a couple of days ago with somebody else. But that's why everybody now all of a sudden is mad at R. Kelly. <laughs> come on, come on, Pastor. <laughs> all 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 of a sudden they mad at R. Kelly, you know, because they've been told to be mad at at a R. Kelly. Oh man! You know, they're Ooh. they're not they're not uh they're not looking at it in in a in a way of saying, well, how can this be actually fixed? So that this doesn't keep happening, or well, why don't we look at our at our own home? You know, because everybody who's mad at our, at at our Kelly right now, a lot of them have daughters in their own house who got cell phones and they're fourteen and they're texting some dude who's nineteen and they don't even know it. But they're told oh to be outraged at our Kelly, so they are right. And so people don't realize that when you're basically engineered like that and when and when they're trying to 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 manipulate you and to control you they want you to get your eyes off of something else that they're doing so what they're doing right now is, is they're doing that to keep you busy so that you don't look at what's really going on which is they're trying to let globalists come in and take over this country this they want to make you uh, a second class or third class citizen. And they want you to be okay with it. They want they want basically for the state to run your life. This is true. And so they don't look at it like that though. And so for me, that's probably the most disappointing thing about the about the difference between the evangelical church for usually predominantly white people and predominantly black people. It's very rare that you will meet the the black pastor who says, "I vote for the spiritual things first, oh, and then I vote you. for the natural things second. Yeah, oh well, man. And you know what? It seems like that is increasing. Mm-hmm. It's definitely increasing. Because it's not popular to be a pastor who comes up and says, Donald Trump was put into the White House by God, so corruption of this government. 
He was put in the White House to give believers a last-ditch effort and chance to be able to claim the remnant generation to prepare people for the harvest of of the Lord. You know, it, it's, it's not popular for a black pastor to do that. It's popular for a black pastor to say things such as, well, you know, and with, and with, and with what we got going on in the, in, the, in the White House now, we need to be even more vigilant against the stuff that's going on. Right, right. You know, and then they get cheers because they're playing people's emotions. Right, but in but the spiritual realm is is not based on your emotion. Exactly, and what it's happened, always based on truth. Yeah, and what happened to all authority is ordained of God. Now, I didn't, I did not like Barack Obama. I, I never, I never. When the man came out, there was there wasn't even a second thought about that. I was voting for this man, and I didn't know everything. the The, the one thing that I knew about him was. As an Illinois senator, he was like an abortion, the abortion king. That's the yeah. one thing I knew about him. And then the other things begin to come out about him. Mm-hmm. But uh, I could not, I could not vote for that man. I couldn't have that man in my church. I couldn't have him in my pulpit. And I have, I have watched uh, on the news a few times, pastors sitting back in their big, you know, the big king seat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. watching why some senator, some black senator, is talking about how Donald Trump is racist. Number one, I wouldn't let anybody talk about it, Barack Obama, even because 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 of the fact that he was the president. I wasn't going to talk about him like that, even though I I I had my total misgivings about him. Mm-hmm. But there was a the he he held in office, mm-hmm. which he got. Well, let me let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did not disrespect him. Like I see the way people are disrespecting uh, Donald Trump, and the thing that I think in my mind that goes on in my spirit is that these pastors better be real careful, because mm. the scripture does say, "Touch not, a, not touch not mine anointed." Do my prophets no harm? And I believe, again, that Donald Trump was put in office for a purpose, and that was to disrupt, and that was to give the body of Christ a reprieve. That's to expose the deep state and to do the things that he are he is doing, and that those of us that know truth are supposed to join in and support him with everything that we can in the things that he's doing. And then I hear, you know, you hear like, well, how can you, how can you, how can you, how can Christians, what's that dude on Fox? Juan Williams. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm about to say, you know, he's, he's just a, he's the paid democratic <laughs> sounding board, you know? Right. Yeah. He's the paid. Cause I'm like, okay, your, your son or both your sons are conservative. And you ain't fooling nobody, dude. <laughs> I, I I think he I think he he has to be the voice of opposition. He's so, such a hater. Everything, well, this president, this to this president, that and and but how can you here's here's what I'm saying. When you speak against Donald Trump, you're really speaking against yourself because he's the commander in chief and you're a part of this country. And so many people, it's, it's like so many people seem to be hell-bent on the destruction of this, this country. And if we look, how stupid, is, mm-hmm. how stupid is it that when we look at Germany, we look at England, and we look at all these countries that have just no borders, mm-hmm. the, the, they just let these people in. How crazy, if we see that happening, how stupid is it for us to do the same thing? You know? And you know what's yeah, and you know what's funny? When you ask people things like and 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 that and that's how you know that they're not using basically any spirit of wisdom. Because when they say things such as, Well, I don't believe in having walls up and I'm always like, Well, you live in a house, right? <laughs> like, do you sleep? 
with the uh, door open? <laughs> Do you leave work and leave the doors wide open and unlocked and and leave your garage door open and leave everything else open? Like, you do that? No, they got all of that and an alarm. Yeah. To tell so them I'm if like, somebody's like, coming in. Yeah. And, and I, it's just and it's just hypocritical. It's, 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 to me, it's hypocritical. You know what? To me, the only thing I could I could I could really reason with that is that there is a spirit. I mean, I used to joke about it. But I mean, it's really to me now it has become more reality than anything. And I call it I just call it for the lack of a better thing, a stupid, dumb spirit. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? Remember remember in the Bible where uh, it was talking about, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, in 1 Kings 22, 21, it says, And there came forth a spirit, stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord mm-hmm. said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Mm. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lion spirit in the mouth of all of these prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. And you know Mm. what? It seemed like that's what's happening today. And it's the it's it's the media, it's the it's the politicians. Yeah. It's like every time and here here we go with Trump. People talk about Trump, but you know what? Trump Trump got some discernment. He comes out yeah. with names like you think about it, he comes out with names like Lion Ted and, <laughs> and he, the Rocket Man. Right. He he's labeling the, he's labeling these people. And you know what? It's funny, but at the same time, it's a whole lot of reality to that. <laughs> but here's the kicker. We talk about the wall and, and Nancy Pelosi, uh, wall is 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 amoral or whatever she said. But check this out. There is a wall around heaven. Yep. Yep. There's a wall. So do we serve an amoral God? That apparently, based on what Nancy Pelosi says, that <laughs> that that has to be that has to be the case. I got you a know? fence around my backyard. I don't have a fence around my front yard, but I got an alarm, and I don't want nobody in my house that's not supposed to be in here. I don't want nobody in this country that's not supposed to be here taking advantage of the American people. They see what we have, and they want it. So what they're doing, they're saying, man, if we could crash this border and we could just, and then you have, here we go. They're working from the outside and we have people from the inside working toward that same goal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and it's always been a goal of what I would call the globalist to make sure that the countries are set up to be able to become a one world government. And so the easiest way to do that is to make sure that you collapse a economy. And the easiest way to collapse a economy is from within, is to make it so that it, they have so many unsustainable things going on that the economy eventually just collapses. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and to be honest, that's what, that's what mass immigration does. Every time that you've seen a mass immigration somewhere um, where there hasn't been an increase in jobs or, or whatnot, always ruin the country that that had the immigration take place in. And so that's why you see now Germany, not are like, man, now we need to get these people out. <laughs> yeah, they, they, but, they, they, but they made the mistake of letting them in. Yeah, they made them. And here, here, here's and this, you know, regardless of what people think, this is not hate speech. This is just the truth. Mm-hmm. If you do your research on Islam, Islam is a violent religion. When when when, when you when people talk about Islam as a religion of peace, I'm like, man, where did they get that from? They they have they ever read the Quran? 
I'm about to say they ain't looking at the same uh, Quran that everybody right. else is studying. And and a lot of Christians believe that you know Allah and 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 God are the same God, but they 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 they're not suffering from a what I would call biblical ill illiteracy. Right. And what here's and here's here's the problem. We now are allowing these people in our government. Yep. And what do you think? The the goal of Islam is to take over. Yep. The goal of of Islam is to dominate. Yep. And there's pockets of it in our country now. Dearborn, Michigan, uh, Minneapolis. And this is where we get uh, these uh, uh, representatives from that are now coming into our government. The leftists and the globalists are allowing this, and this is a danger. And I'm this. This is all I'm saying in this. I don't hate these people, but I have an awareness of their agenda and what they're really about. And it's a part of a a a, a global. They're a part of the globalist agenda as well, and it's something that people need to be aware of. And Christians. We, when we talk about radical Christianity, uh, and I think we had a conversation that we're talking about that even in all of this, God is exposing the church as well mm-hmm. uh, for what it really is. Mm-hmm. Either you're the either you're the church, the 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 entertainment uh, tune up, uh, you know, I I feel good, or now. In this season, I call it remnant. You're the remnant. You're part of the remnant. And the mm-hmm. remnant, these are the ones, these are the ecclesia, and they are speaking truth to the darkness. They are coming out, and they are not biting their tongue. They're speaking truth to all of this error and all of this deception. And they are not, uh, turning back, they're not holding back, and uh, they're not modelly coddling people in their churches. And this is why, and people think of it, uh, and you know this well, this is why some, if you if you really, Pastor Bozeman, yes, you, know good, you know good and well, if you really preach the word, you're going to run a lot of folk away. That's true. If I, know you, that, I definitely know, know that firsthand. <laughs> I think we both know we both know that that firsthand. If you speak the truth, and I'm not talking about uh you we shouldn't wail the truth like a battle act. Yeah. But yet we have a responsibility. See my responsibility and your responsibility number 1 is to God. And it doesn't okay. matter what people say or what people think. What matters is what God thinks, because the the bottom line or the goal is to hear God's voice say, well done. That's what we want to hear him say. And so where are the voices? I look at I listen to all of these people, all these talking about all these preachers and, and and I'm thinking to myself. Man, what the heck did they? And I'm looking at articles: the highest paid pastors and the the largest denomination. I'm gonna say this, and I, and I, and I don't, and, I, and I'm gonna say it in the spirit of love. If you got a packed out church mm-hmm. with five thousand and ten thousand members, you better be scared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because in, cause, cause in, cause in, in, in most cases, and this is what I'm thinking is, is probably going to happen now, um, they don't put people who really are speaking truth on this kind of platform. And I think what's, what's going to happen, and I'm thinking this prophetically in terms of the, of the church and what's going to start happening, is I think it'll get to be like the days of John the Baptist, where people had to go seek out John the Baptist in the wilderness. 
Oh, my goodness. They didn't go to the synagogue. They had to go out into the wilderness where he was to hear truth preach. Wow. Meaning wow. they had to actually work to go find somewhere to go that actually teaches truth. And, and I think that's the word for remnant believers is that in order to go somewhere or, or to actually find the truth, you're going to have to actually put in the work to actually go a day's journey into the wilderness to go find man, truth. Man, Meaning oh you're man. going to have to actually go through some hardship. There's going to actually be some energy that you have to expend to go seek it out, but it's out there. There's someone out there. There is a church out there. There's a pastor out there. Um, but, the, but the main issue is that it was only the people who wanted to speak after the truth that did that. Wow. The problem is, is that we don't have a lot of truth seekers, do we? But no, I know more. I, I I should be careful when I say that because I think about when the <laughs> who was it that went to God and said, "Uh, Lord, it's only me." And God said, yep. "I got seven thousand that haven't bowed. They need a bill." <laughs> <laughs> only That's thing I, I'm gonna say in that. In the 7,000, <laughs> please stand up and be counted. Because <laughs> we need y'all right now. We And you know what? And and let me, let me just say that there's people out there like yourself, like myself. And I thank God uh, for the people that are outside of the mainstream media. I'm going to name some names. One guy, uh, Derek Grayson, I think, uh, uh, Brandon Tatum, uh, Candace Owens. Uh, there's a movement of black people that are standing up and that are telling the truth. And I really appreciate that. So there's, we don't have, if you're out here and you're listening to me, you don't have an excuse for, mm -hmm. for listening to the garbage that you're listening to. When it's so, when the truth is so readily available, if you really seek it out. Let me yeah. and let me say this, and that it, it, good, it's good to seek people out, and good uh, to 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 understand what people are saying. But the bottom line is, what is God saying? What is God saying to you versus what everybody else is saying? Because we can be in a situation, and I feel like that's where we're at right now, where we're speaking truth, and people are looking at us like it's something wrong with us, and after a while. In your in your 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 flesh in your humanity, that can weigh on you to the point where it could turn you if you allow it to, and if you're if you're if you're not in the right right places. I know a lot of people. There's a friend of mine that's a that's a prophet, and he has me cracking up because he says he'll get up on Sunday morning, he'll getting he'll be getting ready to go to church, he'll get his clothes on, and then when he gets ready to go out the door. He'll hear the Lord say, where are you going? <laughs> and he said, Lord, I'm going to church. He's like, uh, I don't want you to go to church today. Get back in there and open up my word, and the Lord will give him something to study out of the word. And then at times, the Lord will send him to a church or or to send him to be a blessing or send him to encourage somebody. But he's like, and he's like, he's like me. It's like, I feel like I'm 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 just. I'm out here because whenever I go to a church and I'm sitting there, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm a I'm a part. I don't I I mean I I I and don't get me wrong, it's not like everybody is off and I'm the only one. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is is that it's like it's so many times it's, it's like people aren't and I know there are people out there and like yourself that are speaking to the to the, speaking the truth. Now, having said that, let me go back up here because there's something that I wanted to read in First Chronicles, chapter twelve, verse thirty-two, and it says, mm -hmm. "And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their command command." commandment we got to be like the men of Issachar we got yeah. we have to have an understanding of my 
my soul, my desire is to understand what is going on in this season right now because it is so polarizing. It's so, it's so much, it's so divisive. But at the same time, I see God at work. I see God's hand. I see God moving and doing things. But it's almost like, here we go back again, the still, small voice. Everybody's looking for these voices, loud, boisterous, but the still, small voice, they're not mm-hmm. here. And I can agree with that 100% because one thing that I really think that you that you touched on is when you go into a church, or maybe a lot of times you don't go apart. I think a lot of that might have to do with the fact that now I think there's been such an increase in churches where a lot of them are operating out of the spirit of error, not the spirit of truth. Oh, my goodness. And it can seem like a lot of times the spirit of error, like it mimics the spirit of God. And you're thinking that, like, man, well, you know, I mean, it feels good sometimes, but I don't know what's going on here. But right. it takes really somebody who really has spiritual discernment to, yeah, to be able to recognize it. Right. And so I think I think that's what's going on in a lot of churches. And when I when I look at the divisiveness about how a believer would feel or how they respond to somebody like Donald Trump, that's pretty much the best example that I can see right. for people having the spirit of error right. or the spirit of truth. Right. It's like they it's like when you talk about Donald Trump, they just lose their they lose their mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 Oh God. It is it's it's sad. But look, we we've gone over uh time and I'm probably gonna have to uh I'm probably gonna break this into parts. But uh I want to uh before we end, uh, we got to give the people some hope. We don't. We don't want to leave it where, where we're. You know, we talked about everything negative, what's going on, but we want to leave. As the old pastor used to tell me when I was a young preacher, son, leave the people with some hope. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to leave the people with some hope, and the hope, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would encourage people to really, in this season, to check your relationship. Your relationship with God is the most important thing that should be going on in your life because it affects everything else. And once you have that relationship in place, and if you have the Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of you, what does the Scripture say? He's going to lead and guide you into all truth. So that's that's the key right there. That's the key to uh, not getting involved in all of this crazy stuff because you have the Spirit of God. God says, okay, I don't want you to do that. Listening to that still, small voice is what's important. No matter what, No matter what color you are, no matter what ethnicity you are, no matter where you come from, The thing that we have in common should be the blood of Jesus Christ. So having said that, do you have anything else you want to add or? I was going to say just to uh, kind of add to what you just said, I believe that when somebody is speaking after God and speaking after truth, what will happen is wherever you are, whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, down South, up North, in the country, uh, in a big city. I believe that when you seek out truth, what God will do is that he'll do like the man in Acts, where the Ethiopian was seeking out the truth and God sent him somebody. Oh, yes. And he put him in contact with someone who was able to point him in the right direction. Right. So I believe that if you're seeking out 
truth, and if you're really seeking after God, what God will do whenever you pray, whenever you ask, whenever you seek Him, God will put somebody in your path and put something in your path that will guide you somewhere where you can find truth, where there is truth, where there is fellowship of people who are seeking after truth, who can encourage you, who can uh, hold you accountable. And I, and I believe that God is still doing that today the same way that he did for the Ethiopian, the same way that he did when Cornelius was seeking after God, the same way that he did for all of those men and women who were looking for God, and God always put somebody in their path, point them in the right direction. Because right. nobody can come unless the Spirit draws them. And I believe that when the Spirit draws you, He gives you direction on where it is to go. So I believe that that is going to happen, and I believe God is doing that even right now. Praise God. Let's end this in some prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to make a presentation to whom it may be that listens to this presentation. May it touch their heart and may it open up a door of understanding and may it give them a hunger and truth for you, for your knowledge, because we know that's the only thing that works. And Lord, we say that as it goes out over the airwaves, may it have the attendant effect. That is to mobilize your people to stand up against everything that the enemy is bringing. May they stand up against falsehood and lies. And may they represent the truth. May they represent the truth in the workplace and at school and in the courthouse, and on the streets, in the airports, wherever they might be, may they represent truth and may they speak truth. And we thank you for it. And we thank you for what you're doing. Pastor Bozeman, you have anything to add to that? No, sir. Just a hearty amen in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening, and uh, we're going to come back with some other topics in the near future, so be listening for us, and we're out.